They went for pregame in the blue jerseys just like any other game. While they were out on the field, we put the orange jerseys in their locker. And as soon as we entered the locker room, you could see the, the orange jerseys on your locker. You can't describe how emotional it, it still is. Uh, Notre Dame started it. No, no one in college football messed around with their jerseys. I mean, it was, it was traditional jerseys. Notre Dame was a heavy underdog against USC, and they came out in green jerseys. First time they had ever wore green. That's what started all of us bugging Coach Barfield about doing something special with an orange jersey. You know, the decision was made to get a, a set of orange jerseys, but when and if we were going to wear them was, you know, going to be determined at a later date. We kept asking uh, on and off. Homecoming came and went, and it didn't happen. The last home game of the year was against Georgia. Georgia was very highly ranked at the time. We really weren't. Even at home, we were a pretty significant underdog. Coach Barfield decided this might as well give it a shot. The locker room went nuts. We were beating each other. I mean, it was it was chaos. It was it was wild. It was just pandemonium. That dressing room was as crazy before the game as any dressing room I'd ever seen after the game. Man, I was on a team that never went to a bowl game. The transition between Coach Jordan and, and Coach Barfield was was tough. Special things like this meant a lot. We ran from the locker room straight out on the field. The crowd had a, a real emotional start, a you know, big response to the team coming out, and then it was silent. I mean, that stadium was as quiet as you could possibly, like there was nobody there. They didn't realize. They didn't who was coming out of the Porto. I mean, it was, it was a, bunch of, a bunch of orange jerseys coming out of Auburn's home Porto. Then the place just erupted. And just, you know, they, the fans were just as excited as the players were there. It was as high as you could be before ball. It stayed that way the whole game. It, it motivated the crowd as much as it did us. We knew we could play with them. We stymied their offense all day long. Second half we come alive and they, they couldn't stop us. There were players that were playing way above their heads the entire game. It was, it was quite a battle. We were up 22 to 15 and they scored and went for one. They thought they could stop us and get the ball back and kick a field goal and beat us 25 to 22. But the game was different then. We didn't throw the ball a lot. It was three yards in a cloud of dust. Tied Georgia 22-22. I mean, we, we certainly were an underdog, so I mean, the, the, you don't want to really tie anybody, but tying was better than losing. Whether we would have tied them wearing blue jerseys, who knows, but it's a great thing to talk about. Yeah, Coach Dye had been there for several weeks and you know, he called me one day and said, you still got those orange jerseys? And I said, yes, sir. He said, I don't like orange. I said, don't worry about it, Coach, you'll never see them. <laughs> so I knew then that the orange jerseys were history. <laughs> and you look back on it and you just, it was pretty neat to be a part of that. Those guys that wore them that first time are in the record books. You hear about people all the time, the orange jerseys coming back, and you hear, you know, fables and stories and all that. But the real deal was the coach did us a favor. You know, the coach through the seniors who had been there through some tough times, their last home game. That was his bowl game, I guess, you know. <laughs>